Oh boy, this beauty of a lens right here is the brand new Super Telephoto from Sigma 500 millimeters f 5.6 DG DN sports lens. And this wonderful lens allowed me to get photos like this and this and this with the greatest of ease. What you get here is great build quality, weather resistance, almost flawless optics, amazing autofocus, wonderful stabilization, razor sharp photos, and it's just a joy to use because it is lightweight compared to most super telephotos. It is also reasonably priced compared to most super telephotos. This is going to open up a whole new world for a lot of photographers who want to get in on pro level gear when it comes to shooting sports, wildlife, and nature. So uh, we should talk about it. Now, the first thing I'm going to tell you to do before you even consider a fancy lens like this is make sure you have a fast card. If you're getting an SD card, get something like this, this Sony Tough card right here. It will uh, let you write to the card faster and your buffer won't fill up as easily. If you have one of the cameras like I do here, A7 IV, that takes the CF Express A cards, then check this one out from Pergear. It's actually really, really affordable and it does a wonderful job. I took all of my photos on this right here. I had no buffer troubles whatsoever. Whatsoever. So check the links in the description. I will have the lens there, but I will also link to these cards because these are a great deal. And uh, the Sony Tough cards, if you don't have the CF Express A cards. And I also want to do a big shout out to Sigma Canada for lending me this lens pre-release. It was great to be able to go out and take photos with it for a few days and really get to know the lens. Uh, so I appreciate the people from Sigma Canada sending this over for a lend which is too bad. Can I keep it? Let me keep it. I love taking photos with this thing. Now this lens is available for the Sony E mount and also the L mount. And if you have an L mount camera, you can get also the teleconverter that can go with this to give you reach up to a thousand millimeters. However, you're gonna have to have a lot of light for something like that because you will lose stops of light when you are using teleconverters on these lenses. So bear that in mind. You're not just gonna get a thousand millimeters at f 5.6. So now before we get into the optics of this lens, let's talk about the build. As you can see, this is not that big for a super telephoto. It is only 1,365 grams. It is very hand holdable. In fact, I shot all of my photos handheld. I didn't use the tripod one single time, never got tired. I am a Herculean He-Man. However, it is really an easy lens to take around when you're considering the reach that you're getting out of this. 1,300 and 65 grams. Now visually the lens does look a lot bigger when you put on the included plastic hood and uh, now you can just stand it up has a little bit of rubber on the bottom there so you can just stand it up if you're in the field it will also help you with ghosting and flaring however the flaring and ghosting control on this thing is fantastic. Wait I said I wouldn't talk about optics we're talking about build quality. It's got a lovely aperture ring here that can be uh, as you can see clicked or de-clicked on or off. So if you want it smooth or you want it clicky, I like to have it clicky. You can also lock it right here. So if you want to leave it in A in automatic mode, you can just lock it into that and then it won't slip back into manual mode. I personally like using the aperture ring manually myself. We have a plethora of switches on the side, your autofocus to manual focus switch. This right here is your focus limiter. So if you want to focus close up on a lot of subjects, you put it on the close focus. Uh, and if you want to focus on everything further away, then you put it on the further away focus. It will help the lens determine the focus even faster. I just left it on full. So that just the, does the whole range of focus almost all of the time. And I had no trouble whatsoever. Then you have your uh, optical stabilization, you have off, and then uh, number one is for your general stabilization, and uh, that is just handheld shooting around. But when you want to go panning, when you are going to take photos of the birds in flight or the sports and you are panning, you would switch to OS number two. You have two custom switches which are programmable as well and three focus hold buttons that can be programmed. Now you have a boot right here and this boot is in fact Arca Swiss. So that's great. I always love it when the boot is Arca Swiss and then you can loosen it up and it actually goes in clicks. So uh, that's nice. Sometimes you have a boot and it doesn't have hard stops and I find that confusing using and you can get a little tool to detach the boot entirely if you don't want to use it and you want to go super light handheld. 
has a big beautiful lens element on the front right there 95 millimeter filter thread so you can stick filters right on there you want some long exposures and then on the back here we have some weather sealing the minimum focus distance of this lens is 320 centimeters or 126 inches you are usually quite far away from your subject anyway when you are shooting with a 500 millimeter lens now in terms of the optics, let's talk about the autofocus. It is just blazingly fast. Whether you're shooting autofocus single or autofocus continuous here with my Sony cameras, it just kept up. It was absolutely fantastic. It just grabbed my subject. I never had any trouble. Even birds in brush, in bushes, I had no trouble at all detecting little tiny birds. The autofocus was so great, snappy, and reliable, as good as any G Master I've ever seen. They call it the HLA system the high response linear actuator autofocus. I don't care what they call it. It is absolutely fantastic. And speaking of fantastic, the stabilization in this lens, the optical stabilization in the new Sigma lenses is second to none. It is just so great. Like you're shooting at 500 millimeters handheld and you feel your hand shaking around a little bit and the image is bouncing all over the place. You half press the shutter and then just boom, nice and smooth. And then you're able to get your shot in focus with a lower shutter speed. I was shooting sometimes at a 500 millimeter lens at one over 125th of a shutter and I was still getting razor sharp images. So just excellent stabilization. And then when you want to pan for your panning shots, you switch it to the image stabilization uh, number two and then that way it will won't stabilize left to right it won't stabilize the horizontal it'll only stabilize the vertical so it won't fight you when you are doing your panning sharpness it should go without saying by now just looking at the pictures that i've shown that this lens is extremely sharp and it is very sharp even wide open at 5.6 it might get a hair sharper stop down to f8 or so but not much sharper it is excellent at 5.6 you will probably use this lens a lot at 5.6 so it did need to be sharp at that aperture and it certainly is i just love the sharpness that comes out of this lens all the way up until you start getting into the high f stops and diffraction starts to kick in this lens so great in terms of sharpness the chromatic aberration is simply undetectable in my photos. I couldn't find any CA at all. I was looking, I was pixel peeping, I shot completely backlit and uh, these branches up against the sky, no CA whatsoever. And in also the longitudinal chromatic aberration where the autofocus backgrounds are different colors. Those things, it also, excellent performer. I couldn't find any loca as well. Just amazed I was at the chromatic aberration and the longitudinal chromatic aberration. The control that this lens has, wonderful. And in terms of focus breathing, very minimal focus breathing. And that may not matter to you with how you shoot. Shooting a super telephoto, you may not be worried about, say, stacking images. But some people do like to shoot landscape photos with, uh, you know, a super telephoto. And they may want to stack their images. So it's nice that there is minimal focus breathing. Now, there is a little bit of barrel distortion and some heavy vignetting when you are down at 5.6. But Sigma has already provided me with the Lightroom profile that they will be releasing to the public. And in one click, that is completely erased. All of the corners brighten up and uh, the barrel distortion is gone. So as long as you are enabling the uh, Lightroom profile or the corrective profile, you won't have an issue with that. But if you don't enable those profiles, you will definitely see some heavy vignetting down at f5. 5.6. The flaring and ghosting control is also excellent on this lens. The coatings that they are using are working very well. You could have a very backlit situation. You could have a sun creeping in, a midday sun bright in the shot, and you're still going to retain a ton of contrast. Even if you don't use the lens hood right here, it is still fantastic against flares and ghosting. Good job, Sigma. So let's talk about the price and the trade-offs a little bit with this lens. You are getting a fantastic optical performer, but it is not going to be free. However, when you start to compare it to other super telephoto lenses, you realize why this one may hit the mark for so many people. If you look at a Canon 600mm f4 or a Sony 600mm f4, you're going to have to pay about $13,000 USD for those lenses. This one here is coming in at slightly less than $3,000, 2999 So $3,000 
for this lens. Now, you are getting 500 millimeters instead of 600 millimeters, so you get less reach than those very expensive lenses, and you are also getting 5.6 instead of f4, and that is a full stop of light. So double the light for those two big lenses, and they are big. So not only are they $13,000, they are also extremely heavy and large lenses. I believe those lenses are around 3,000 grams, so more than double the weight. And these days, that extra stop of light makes less of a difference due to the software enhancements we now have. The AI noise reduction in some of the programs, like uh, Lightroom even, their AI noise reduction is fantastic. I was able to use it on some photos where I was shooting extremely high ISOs, like 12,800, and it was still coming out very, very nice. And uh, Topaz AI is also great. Luminar has a great denoising feature as well. So uh, there are so many things you can do in software to clean up the noise if you do have to reach into those higher ISOs that I think now is the time where a lens like this really, really shines. Now, while I think this lens is an absolute bargain compared to those very expensive other super telephoto prime lenses, there are a couple of other options you may want to consider before you invest your money into this bad boy. One is from Sigma themselves. The uh, 60 to 600 millimeter lens. It goes from f4.5 to f6.3. Now, I have reviewed that lens on this channel and it is absolutely outstanding. The stabilization, fantastic, just like this lens. The autofocus, fantastic, just like this lens. It's from those new line of lenses with the HLA system and the new stabilization. So it is a wonderful lens and it is only $2,000 compared to this one at $3,000. You get that versatility 60 to 600 and just wonderfully sharp images. However, that is a beast of a lens. It is quite large and heavy. It has an external zoom and it's uh, it's not going to be that easy to handhold that lens for a long period of time. You may want a monopod with that guy. But if you don't mind carrying around that heavier, bigger lens, then you do have more versatility with that lens and you're not going to lose much image quality. This one is probably slightly sharper, it being a prime lens, less moving parts, but the 60 to 600 is still a very sharp lens. And at the long end of the 60 to 600, if you are shooting at 500 millimeters, let's say you're at f6.3, which will let in a third less light than this lens at f5.6. Now, if you're in the Sony system, the other lens you may want to consider is the 200 to 600 f5.6 to 6.3. Again, that comes in at around $2,000, so about $1,000 cheaper than this guy. It is substantially bigger and heavier than this lens. That's about 21 100 grams and you get that 6.3 at the long end. Also, the stabilization is not quite as good in that Sony lens. That's a bit of an older lens. It's not quite as good as the stabilization that is in this lens or the Sigma 60 to 600. You will also get slightly sharper photos with this wonderful prime lens. But the Sony 200 to 600, again, very versatile, pretty affordable when you compare it to other super telephotos and uh, will get you great shots, sharp shots, good autofocus. It is another lens that you may want to consider in this category. Now, I should mention there is one more lens that's actually the cheapest of all, and that is the Sigma 150 to 600. But the 150 to 600 is not the newest generation of the Sigma sports lenses, so it doesn't have that new updated optical stabilization that is so great, and it also doesn't have that HLA autofocus system. So it's a bit of an older generation and uh, not quite as sharp either as the 60 to 600. It's still a sharp lens, and it's still still great, but it's just if I had to choose a Sigma competitor to this guy, I would go with the 60 to 600 myself. So big thanks to Sigma Canada for loaning me this lens. I have been in the market for a super telephoto lens, and this is now at the top of my list. It is just such a wonderful performer. It was so great. I hate to see it go. I may have to pick it up really, really soon. So uh, let me know down below if a telephoto is something you are interested in, and if so, which telephoto are you most interested in? We can have a nice little discussion about it down below. Thanks for watching us. We'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.